We've been on a climate change and health kick lately, but so far we've focused on the threats that our physical health faces on a warming planet. However, the looming cloud of climate change is tough on our mental health too, and we should talk about that. So that's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. Natural disasters have a lot of consequences for our physical health, but we don't talk enough about the consequences to our mental health. And while we wouldn't necessarily call climate change a natural disaster, it too is having an effect on mental health across the world. Some of this is due to conditions being suffered already. For example, increased temperatures are associated with increased rates of suicides during India's growing season, where crop yields are reduced by heat, resulting in economic struggles. In East Africa, climate fluctuations affect livelihood by affecting traditional fishing practices and threaten culture via effects on low-lying coastal heritage sites. Sheep and cattle farmers in Kenya, Somalia, and Tanzania have experienced forced relocations that leads to major losses in livelihood, personal property, and community connections. These changes are heavily associated with poor mental health and increased rates of substance misuse. Inuit populations in Canada report that changes in climate patterns affecting things like snow and ice stability and wildlife and vegetation patterns were negatively impacting their sense of well-being. Changes to their land-based activities and cultural identities were associated with increases in family stress, potential for substance misuse, and a potential increase in suicide ideation. Then there's mental health struggles with the anticipated effects of a warming planet. Research indicates that grief and anxiety related to anticipation of changes due to climate change is seen all over the world and is often based on climate-related events happening now that are predictive of future losses. These changes include lost ways of life, major losses to livelihood, land, cultural ties, and traditions. The amount of people reporting that they felt very or extremely tense in a survey about climate change conducted in 32 countries is nearly or over 25% in almost half of those countries. Australia, Brazil, Chile, Egypt, Finland, Germany, India, Iran, Pakistan, the Philippines, Portugal, Spain, Turkey, Uganda, and the United Arab Emirates. In that same survey, over a quarter of respondents from 11 of the countries reported being very or extremely terrified about it, though we will note here that survey participants were not randomly selected, so it's not possible to say that these results accurately reflect the mood across these countries. A recent survey in the United States indicated that nearly 30% of Americans are very worried about climate change. A smaller but still significant number of people have greater anxiety about it. 9% reported that they felt unable to control their worry. 8% reported interest in seeking counseling for their climate-related anxiety. And 7% reported that it affected their ability to enjoy things. Another paper looking at the top four countries contributing to climate change reported that the majority of American and Japanese participants never to less than rarely experience cognitive, emotional, or functional impairments related to climate change. For China and India, 20 to 30 percent of participants reported sometimes or more frequently experiencing such impairments. This kind of anticipatory anxiety is also affecting major decisions for people like whether or not they'll have kids. Even individuals who are certain they want children are hesitating because they're afraid the planet won't be safe enough for their children to thrive. This is all pretty awful, and we're not aiming to make it feel worse, so let's talk about some potential action we could take to improve mental health in the face of climate change. Not to sound like a broken record across episodes, but we need more research. We need a better understanding of how and to what extent climate change affects mental health, and of who is most affected. This will allow us to create targeted intervention strategies and eventually scale up the ones that are most effective. When we're considering the cost of climate change, we need to include the cost of mental health, accounting for the cost of addressing treatment in our climate-related policies and fully recognizing the importance of climate change to mental health. And speaking of climate-related policies, we need more of them. Recognizing the effects of climate change and instituting meaningful policies to both combat and adapt to it can have a major positive effect on mental health by combating the hopelessness that many people feel about it. A major component of anxiety is uncertainty. So implementing actionable policies to avoid what we can and cope with what we can't, and then communicating those policies well can go a long way in alleviating uncertainty. Creating collective action-centered policies not only gives us something productive to do with our anxiety, it gives us space to do it with a community of like-minded people. That's important because solid social support is pretty crucial for mental health. On an individual level, 
Being mindful of the media you consume about climate change is important. Knowing the facts so that you can take appropriate collective action is important. But fixating and over-consuming climate-related content goes a few steps past being productive for your mental health. And finally, researching and writing this episode brought to mind the inequities of climate change. Certain countries and certain people stand to lose a lot more to climate change than others. And those most at risk are often the ones contributing the least to climate change. This is so critical to understand and address, so much so that we plan to dedicate an entire episode to it. We hope to see you there. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on climate change and food security. We'd appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel down below. Consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Edward Lillahome, and of course, our surgeon admiral, Sam.